Hello, my name is Mark Higgins and I'm one of the elders here at Free Grace Baptist Chapel in Belvedere. Uh, we, we would like to welcome you to our Christmas video of 2020. In this video we will sing carols that we hope you are able to join in with at home and we will be having a Bible readings and a message telling you of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. We hope you enjoy this video and as you sing the carols and hear the Bible readings and hear the message, we hope and pray that you will consider the words that you are hearing and indeed singing and uh, will come to know the wonderful good news of the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself and come to know him as your saviour. Let's just begin with prayer. Our oh, Father in heaven, we come before you uh, giving you thanks for uh, this opportunity to sing praise to you as we hear the carol sung and the words of the Bible read to us, as we hear the message from uh, your word about the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you would uh, speak it to us, that we may know the Lord Jesus Christ who came at Christmas time, who we are celebrating uh, at this time of year. Oh Lord, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that we would know him each for ourselves today. We thank you uh, that though we have been under a terrible strain this past year, we thank you that you have brought us to the, the, the closing days of this year. Uh, we thank you that you have been with us, that you have kept us, and we pray that you would bless us uh, in the coming year. And we pray that many would come to know and love the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Well, we're going to have our reading start now. We're going to start the readings in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And we're going to start in Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 19. We're going to ask three of our younger uh, people to read from that passage. We're going to ask Luke and Chloe and Phoebe to read to us from Genesis. Thank you. 
We come to our second reading now. We're moving further on into the book of Genesis and we come to Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. And we're going to ask one of our older members, Ken, to read to us from that part of Genesis. Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens, and the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice.
for our third reading, we move further on into the Bible towards the middle. And we read from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 3 and 6 to 7. And we're going to ask one of our elders, Paul, to read to us from Isaiah. The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to it uphold it, with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Well, we move further into Isaiah now in Isaiah chapter 11 and verses 1 to 9. And we can ask Katrina to read to us from that passage in Isaiah. Isaiah 11 verses 1 to 9. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counts on might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be on the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. 
They shall not hurt or destroy it in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Well, around halfway now, and we move further on in the Bible to the prophecy of Micah, and Micah chapter 5, verse 2. I'm going to ask Pete to read to us from that passage. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrata, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth to me one who is to be ruler in Israel whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Thank you. 
Well, we move into the New Testament now, into the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. And we ask sisters Ellie and Amy to read to us from Luke. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her.
And we move now into further into Luke, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. It's a very long passage, but we have three readers, brothers and sisters, Harry, Hannah and George, to read to us from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. And it came to pass that in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary as the of the wife, who was with his child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him, wrapped, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in their fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, the glory of the Lord shone, shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, for which will be to all people. There is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling and cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marvelled at those things which were told them by the shepherds.
one from the end now. We move into the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And we ask sisters, Abby and Izzy, to read to us from Matthew. Our Bible reading is found in Matthew chapter 2, and we are reading from verses 1 to 12. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Last reading, sadly, now, move on into the Gospel of John. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. And we have another little family to read to us. We ask Alex, Ariana and Kieran to read to us from that passage in John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, 
and the life is the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, of, to them he gave the right of, to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
sing glory to the newborn King. There are 250 babies born in the world every single minute. And each one of those babies need a name. You have a name, I have a name. Every single baby needs a name. And all of those names are given to us for very different, for, for many different reasons. Maybe it's a, a named after a grandfather or grandmother. Or maybe it's named after a famous person who your parents love. Maybe it's because the name has some deep significance to them. Uh, maybe it's the time of year that you were born. Some parents wait a few days before confirming the name of their child just to make sure the name fits the child well. Making uh, this decision is hard, isn't it? Because it's a very big decision. We know that when we name our child that they, would be, they will be called by that name for the rest of their life. These are big decisions. Now, there was a couple uh, many years ago, some 2,000 years ago, who gave birth to a baby boy in a place called Bethlehem. But the big question was, what was his name going to be? Were they going to name him after one of their parents or grandparents, as would be the uh, custom of the day? Were they going to have great long discussions about it like many of us do? Well, no, they were spared all of those discussions because wonderfully God sent an angel to them to tell them that uh, the name of the child and the name of that child that God chose for him was Jesus. And this name per perfectly described him and certainly perfectly described what he was going to do because Jesus means the Lord saves we are very familiar with saviors aren't we very familiar with superheroes uh, they're on our tv screens and cinema screens uh, every week there are countless numbers of superhero films aren't there just think of them you've got superman and spider-man and Wonder Woman, to name but a few, and the list goes on and on. It's not surprising, is it, that um, out of the top ten grossing films of all time, five of them are superhero films. And even the top one grossing film of all time is a superhero film. We love to watch a superhero film. It's great, isn't it, to, to see someone far greater than us maybe from another world, swooping in and saving civilization, saving mankind. There's something, a force or an enemy far greater than us and we need someone else to help and save us and protect us. We, are, we love to see this and I think that this is because we are longing deep down for a saviour, for someone to protect us, to care for us to save us from something bigger than ourselves. We want a superhero. But that begs the question, doesn't it? If, if my hypothesis is right, is that because deep down we all desire and long for someone greater than ourselves to care for us, to protect us, is there something that we need to be protected from? Is there something greater than us, something that we cannot do anything about ourselves that we need protecting from? And if there is, is there someone, is there a hero, is there a saviour for us? Well, let's just think about those questions for a moment. This year has been quite some year, hasn't it? It's been a very difficult year. Uh, last year at Christmas time, we wouldn't have been thinking that this year was going to be like this. Uh, our, we, we have suffered great loss in this nation. Sadly, we've lost loved ones. Maybe you have lost a loved one or a friend. Many of us have lost work, employment. 
We're concerned about tomorrow. Many of us have lost health as we've struggled with the effects, either mentally or physically, from being um, isolated um, or even contracting COVID. There have been much loss and much heartache this year. We've been looking to the government to guide us through and to protect us and to help us through this pandemic. But sadly, often they have failed us and uh, have made mistakes. Now, they are just human like us and we can understand that they make mistakes. But they haven't been the heroes that we've been desiring. The scientists seem to be quarrelling among themselves and can't come to a right conclusion. The, 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 the NHS staff, the carers have been working under tremendous pressure, doing a grand job of looking after this nation. And yet they haven't been able to protect us from illness, suffering and death. The scientists have been working round the clock, testing to try and protect us and, and seeking out a, an antidote, a, a vaccine for, for this particular illness. We thank God that there is a vaccine on the way and we, we give him thanks for that. God has given us scientists to make these things and he's given us this vaccine. We praise God for that and we do pray that this will produce uh, good effects in this nation over the coming months. But even that will not save us from ultimate demise. No, no matter how bad this situation gets with COVID, no matter how bad the situation gets with any other illness in the future years, my friends, there is something far greater. There's something far greater that we need to be saved from, and that's something the Bible calls sin. Now, we have a very uh, light view of sin in the West uh, we, we think about it as something, uh, something naughty, something that, that's a guilty pleasure, maybe. I know one particular uh, diet plan allows you to have a certain few sins per day, thinking very light of them, something small, something nice. Yet, this kind of concept of sin is completely foreign to the Bible, to God's word. And therefore to God, the one who created us, the one who is perfect and just and holy. No, the Bible teaches us that sin is disobedience to God. That's either doing something that he's told us not to do or not doing something that he has commanded us to do. He has laid in, in his word instruction, commands, and we are to obey them. Sadly, none of us have obeyed them, have we? We've all gone wrong, we've all sinned, we've all disobeyed him, we've lied, haven't we? I don't think there's anyone that can hold their hands up honestly and say, I have never lied. We've stolen. Think about that time that you've stolen from your boss when you've spent a little too long on Facebook. Or maybe those sweets that you stole when your parents said you weren't allowed them. No, we sin. The Bible sums up the Ten Commandments in two. That is, you, shall, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and your strength. And you must love your neighbour as yourself. Well, I know, hand on heart, that I can't say that I have kept that. I haven't obeyed him. I haven't loved him. I've lived ignoring this great God who sent his son. I've ignored him and I've lived for myself. That is what it is to sin, to live for our own pleasures, for our own desires, without any regard for God. And the Bible also teaches that there is a great consequence because of that sin. The Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death. Yes, physical death. But not only that, eternal damnation, eternal punishment. 
My friends, we are in a dire situation. Each of us sin because sin is like a, a disease that spreads throughout all generations. Right from our first parents who disobeyed God. And we have inherited their nature of disobedience. We don't have to teach children to be naughty, do we? Because in our heart, we are disobedient. So we have a great problem. We need a saviour. There is nothing that we can do because we are all sinners and deserve judgment. We need a saviour. And Jesus is that saviour. He is that hero that we have been longing for. That one greater than ourselves to come and save us and protect us and care for us. The Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 1.21 tells us, uh, as the angel comes to Joseph and tells him what to call uh, his son, he said, she, that is Mary, will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And what a great saviour he is. He doesn't just save us from one aspect of sin. No, he comprehensively saves us. He saves us from the punishment, the ultimate punishment of sin. And gives us eternal life. He saves us from uh, the consequences of sin, when we will get, gain perfect bodies when he comes again. But he also, in this life, breaks the, the power of sin in our lives so that we can obey him and follow him and love him. He, he, he even takes away the burden of sin, the guilt of sin in our lives. No doubt, like, like you, like me, before I came to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and faith, when I turned to him and trusted him, before that time I had such guilt about my uh, disobedience, about things that I'd done wrong that I knew were wrong deep down. And yet he can take that away. He saves from sin. But how can he do this? Well, it's because Jesus is God made flesh, made man. He is God eternal taken on humanity. He is human like you and me and so can be our representative. And so as our representative, he lived the perfect life, but he died a death he didn't deserve because he had never sinned. But not only did he physically die, no, in three hours on the cross, he bore the punishment, he took the wrath of God upon the sins of his people. That wrath that all of his people would not have been able to exhaust throughout the whole of eternity, he took in himself on the tree in three hours. How could he do that? Well, it's because he is infinite God. He is God, he is the God man of infinite worth. And so he took the punishment for all those who put their faith in him. Jesus is the greatest hero. Jesus is the saviour. He is your only hope. There is nothing you can do for yourself to save yourself from sin. The only thing we can do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.16, a very famous verse in the Bible, tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What wonderful life, what wonderful news of a Saviour born in Bethlehem, who we remember this Christmas time, who was born as Saviour. I pray that at this Christmas time, when you hear the carols and have heard this message, you will consider who Jesus is, who you are, how you are in desperate need of a saviour and how he is the one that can save. And that you would look to him, believe on him, 
trust him, turn from yourself and your own pride and reliance upon yourself and look alone to him and be saved. If you want to know more about him or about following him, then please get in contact with us and we would be glad to, to tell you some more of the good news about Jesus and how you can come to know him. And uh, we would be pleased to see you on Sundays to hear the preaching of God's word. But just contact us so that we can speak with you. This is of great importance and I urge you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ today.